Hey guys, I'm Saurav. Welcome to the channel. This is the third episode of the color grading series. In the first two episodes, we talked about tone curves and the HSL panel. Today, as the title suggests, we are talking about split toning. Split toning is a very fast way to color grade images. Why am I saying this? You will understand when I start editing. But before I start editing, let's understand what split toning is. Let's split the word split toning. Toning means coloring and split means split, right? So basically you separate the image into highlights and shadows and you color them separately. That's the concept of split toning. This is the meaning, but how to use it? What are the do's and don'ts? How to master the split toning panel? That's what I'm going to talk in this video. So without wasting any time, let's get started. In split toning, you have three components. Hue, saturation and balance. I have explained hue and saturation in detail in episode 2 of color grading where I was talking about HSL panel. But in short, hue is what color you're choosing and saturation is the intensity of that color. Now what is balance? I'll talk about that later. First, let's do some coloring. As I said before, in split toning, we color the highlights and shadows separately. So while using split toning, we have to decide the color combination for highlights and shadows because that is going to decide the final color grade. There are three ways of selecting colors. First is moving the slider and changing the hue. If saturation is zero, you won't see any change. So I keep it at 50. I select the color. I can adjust the saturation later. It's not necessary to add colors to highlights and shadows both. You can also do only highlights or only shadows. For example, if I only want it to affect the highlights, I'll just keep the saturation zero for the shadows. And if I only want to affect the shadows, I'll keep the saturation zero for highlights. The second method is selecting the color through the rectangular box. If you move left and right, you adjust the hue. If you move up and down, you adjust the saturation. I'm usually at the center vertically, so the saturation is about 50. And then I change my hue to see the effect on the image. The third method is using the color picker option and selecting the color. So maybe I like this blue. I want to increase the saturation, I'll just move up. I want to change the hue, I will move left and right. Fun fact, if you like color grade of any particular image, you can actually drag the color picker out of Lightroom and select those colors. Pretty cool, right? Now, it won't have the same effect because two images are different, but if those two images are similar, you can get a very similar color grade instantly. There are also some presets that Lightroom has made which you can use for your images. I like to have complete manual control over my colors, but sometimes presets can be a nice starting point and then I can tweak my colors if I like the result. Okay, so you have understood how to select colors, how to add colors for highlights and shadows, but now what is balance? Balance is basically prioritizing the colors. You did not understand anything, I am sure about it, so let me explain. There are two colors chosen, color highlights affecting only highlights and color shadows affecting only shadows. Color highlights is not affecting shadows, color shadows is not affecting highlights and that is because the balance is set to zero. When you change the balance, you are giving one color more priority over the other. Just wait for a couple of minutes, you will understand everything. When you move to the right, you give more priority to color highlights. Similarly, when you move to the left, you give more priority to color shadows. Now what do you mean by giving more priority? It means when you give more priority to color highlights, it also starts affecting the shadows. And now color shadows is affecting a very smaller part comparatively. When the balance was at zero, the priority was equal. Let me show you one more example. You will understand it in much more detail. Let's get back to the waterfall image. I want the extreme shadows to be warmer, but overall I want a more aqua or a blue look. So I will give color highlights more priority. If you don't want color highlights to affect the shadows, but you want to reduce the color in shadows, then you use saturation and not balance. I hope you have understood what balance is. It might sound like a tricky concept initially, but once you start using it, it will be easier for you. Now these were the three components of split toning, but how to use it for color grading? I'll be showing my workflow, yours can be different too. First I set my saturation to 50, then I select the hue so that I can see the effect of the hue on the image. Selecting hue for highlights and shadows is the most important step because this is going to decide my overall color grade. Once I'm happy with the colors for highlights and shadows, I change my saturation. Once I'm happy with the saturation, then I change my balance. Once I'm happy with the colors, with the saturation, with the proper balance and done. 
As I said before, split toning is a very faster way to color grade images. If you're into color grading, split toning is a must learn tool. One advice that I would like to give is, if you're into color grading, don't only learn split toning. Don't only use split toning. Use it along with tone curves or HSL panel and then you can color grade your images in a much better manner. That's it from this video guys. I hope you have learned something about the split toning panel. I've upgraded my sound and the light setup. I hope it sounds and looks better right now. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about this video. I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care. Enjoy color grading. Enjoy editing. And do whatever you want. Be happy. Bye.